Hi, boys and girls. Today for Skills Unit 6, we're jumping into Lesson 17. Let's take a look at our primary focus slide. Your goals for today, you are reading The Burning of Washington, D.C. with Purpose and Understanding. You will answer questions about key details in the text. You will add details to create more complex sentences. You will identify different parts of speech in the burning of Washington, D.C., and you will read word pairs and determine whether targeted letters in each word make the same sound. You will also identify verbs and adverbs in sentences. So a lot going on today. Let's take a look at our spellings preview. We have E-A on our card making the E eh sound. Like in the word head, you hear E-A making that E eh sound. Sometimes it can make the E sound, but in this case, it's making the E eh sound. For example, heavy. Okay, let's go on to our next slide. The burning of Washington, D.C. That is our chapter we're reading today. Let's look at some of the vocabulary words. The first one, charge, that is a verb, means to rush into. So for example, the bulls charge into the wall. Okay, next, toast, that is also a verb. That means to raise a glass and drink in honor of someone or something. Next, ransack, that is another verb. That's to search in order to steal and cause damage. Okay, next, torch. That is a piece of wood that burns at one end, like a tiki torch. Okay, next, drape. Like drapes, those are curtains. Okay, that's a noun. Next, heavy blow. That is a difficult loss to deal with. So maybe somebody take, took a heavy blow after something bad happened. They're trying to cope with that. Next, we have soot. That's the black powder left behind when something burns. Almost like ashes, but a lot darker and thinner, okay? All right, some discussion questions. These are the questions that I would ask you if we were in class. So let's go through them. That way, when you're reading, you can think about the questions. Why did British soldiers burn Washington, D.C.? How were the fires set by the British soldiers put out? And why did the Madisons feel they would never call the president's house home again? I want you to think of those questions while you're reading and then go back to the slide and answer them. Okay, next we have our parts of speech activity page. This is more of review. It's all about common nouns, proper nouns, verbs. You should all know those by now, boys and girls. Common noun, person, place, or thing. Proper noun, naming a person or a place. And verb is an action word. Okay, on this page, you're going to hunt through the book. And on this page, you're going to write down what they're asking for. For example, number one, common noun. You need to go through the chapter and find a common noun and write it down. Next, you're going to find a proper noun naming a person. Okay, Dolly Madison, write it down. Okay, you can pause this video, complete this page, go through your chapter, read your story, and then you can move on or do it at the end, up to you, whatever works best. All right, moving on. Again, this is review, activity page 17.2. You are looking at the words and you're really, really thinking about the letters that are underlined. And do they make that same sound or do they make a different sound? Okay, the first one, let's do this one together. If it's the same sound, you're going to write same on the line. If it's different, you're going to write different on the line. Number one, we have stampede. 
and reveal are the E's underlined and stampede making the same sound as E and A in reveal. Stampede, reveal. Yes. If you said, yep, they're making the same sound, you are correct. Go ahead and write same on the line. Okay, number two. We have the words increase and instead. Now, EA is underlined in each of those words. Is EA making the same sound in each of those words? Increase instead. I don't really think so either, right? So you're going to write different on that line, okay? Now you're going to complete the rest of this page on your own. Whoops. Once you're finished, go on to the next slide or do it at the end, whatever works best. Okay, next, another review activity page, 17.3. This is all about verbs and adverbs. Okay, you need to read the sentence and put a wiggly line under the verb and a triangle around the adverb. Then draw an arrow from the adverb pointing to the verb. Okay, I put some examples in here of adverbs. Now remember, an adverb is a word that describes a bird, or a word. Oh my goodness, I'm looking at the picture of the bird. <laughs> so for example, I held the bird gently. Okay, held would be the verb in that sentence. And gently would be the describing word. That's how you held the bird. Okay, let's take a look at number one. Mark runs quickly. What's the verb in that sentence? If you said runs, you are correct. So let's draw that wiggly line under runs. And then what is the adverb? What word is describing runs? Yes, quickly, right? So draw a triangle around the word quickly. And for our last step, we want to draw an arrow from our adverb pointing to the verb. So you're drawing an arrow from quickly to runs because that is the word that is describing runs. Okay? So once you're finished completing activity page 17.3, I would like you to take a look at this slide. This is all about complete sentences. This is also a review, okay? Remember a complete sentence must always have a subject and a predicate. Let's take a look at this sentence. They went on Tuesday. Is that a complete sentence? It is a complete sentence, but it's really short, it's missing some details. Okay, some things that you could think about, who, where, and why. So who, we can say Keenan and Karina. Where, went to an amusement park on Tuesday. Why, to ride roller coasters. So your whole sentence can say, Karina, or I mean, excuse me, Keenan and Karina went to an amusement park on Tuesday to ride roller coasters. Done. You have a detailed sentence. If someone just said they went on Tuesday, you'd be like, who, where, right? And why? To make a successful, awesome, complete sentence, you need details. So you don't have all those questions, right? Always include who, your subjects. Always include where and why. All right, that is it for today, boys and girls. Definitely a longer lesson than the last one. All right, have a great day.